In this video, we're going to be talking about our next potential upcoming snowstorm along with the overall pattern for the next 7 to 10 days so you can plan ahead. Good morning everyone, this is your Saturday, February 26 update and what we're taking a look at this morning is the overall radar for the U.S. and man we had a very active last couple of days with that Arctic blast that plunged all the way down to the deep south that brought all the ice and snow for a good chunk of the country that was a pretty significant arctic blast i mean oklahoma city has surpassed 100 hours of uh, below freezing temperatures dallas was at 60 uh, austin hit 56 degrees you know 20, 56 degree 24 hour swing they went from 88 to 32 degrees within 24 hours that was an all-time uh differential of 24 hour uh, temperature difference and even yesterday, places down into Brownsville, the high was only 45, and that actually surpassed Anchorage, Alaska, 46. So that is a very rare event when you've got a high temperature colder in Brownsville, Texas, than you did in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> but this morning, the air is trying to modify. We do have that last system coming through. They actually just canceled the winter weather advisories in portions of Dallas here where the temperatures has crept up a little bit. But we're dealing with some light showers in and around the Houston area this morning. And we're just dealing with that light last spokes of energy with light freezing rain and rain to the south of there. But we also have another storm that we're going to be looking at all week long as the beginning stages of a relentless rain event for the Pacific Northwest. Pretty much daily rain showers for the next seven days as you're 37 degrees in Seattle, 48 in Los Angeles. 19 this morning in new york so let's take a look at the setup for today overall and there's your cold front all the way down to the deep south it's moving across uh, central florida and yeah we have that last little disturbance off that southwest flow that we've been dealing with has another lift to it it's not a lot of rain but it's causing a lot of uh, you know just cloudy skies and light rain showers for a good chunk of south texas uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, and going into Alabama, we are seeing, you know, very light, subtle, mixed precipitation, but it's really not a big deal. The main event is is over, but we're watching. All eyes are going to be out in, into the Pacific Northwest, where it's going to be very active. The atmospheric river just comes back in a big way, and this is just the beginning of things to come for a very wet week ahead. So you'll, you're going to be dealing with a chilly rain for most of the week, off here off the uh, Washington coast, the Oregon coast, and Northern California, then once you get into the interior regions where it is gonna be cold enough, a lot of that's gonna be falling in the form of snow in the higher elevations of Eastern Washington and, and uh, Eastern Oregon here. But as we move through tomorrow, there's that system continues to race and across again, just kind of light showers that you're gonna be dealing with for portions of the Southeast. You are going to be continuing to be in the north northwest flow up here into portions of far extreme upstate new york getting into vermont and new hampshire as well as into maine so you're still going to be, be dealing with some sh uh, snow up in this uh, area but for the most part the jet stream is slowly modifying it's going to be slowly the the the, uh, the the arctic blast and the cold air is going to be slowly retreating further and further north as we go deeper into the weekend especially into next week where the atmospheric river just continues uh to going to be pummeling uh the pacific northwest going into that sunday time frame but into monday same deal i mean we continue to modify for a good chunk of the country there's your age that's your high pressure that's sinking air and that's nice weather <laughs> we got a lot, a lot of nice weather uh going into a good chunk of the midsection of the country where you're going to be welcoming because it's been really cold and chilly and nasty for the last several days so yeah by the time we get to end february four on your monday time frame it's going to be start it's just going to start really feeling nice for a good chunk of the country so there's your temperatures there's your high temperatures as the air continues to modify as we go into that monday february the 28th time frame widespread 60s for a good chunk of the southern plains uh the southeast i mean florida really never gotten the cold air but you're still going to be cranking well into the 80s a lot of the record temperatures the last couple of days 
But there's the jet stream. I mean, well to the north, it bottles up. So you're still going to be impacting with the cold weather and parts of the Great Lakes, as well as northern parts of uh, the mid-Atlantic states and into the northeast, into New England for your high temperatures on Monday. But there's along the west coast, 55 degrees, you know, widespread 80s for southern California, the southwest. Uh, just yep, the air continues to modify as we get deeper into the weekend of the next week. But there's your heavier rain. By Monday, we're going to be looking at some possibly flooding rains as a marginal risk or excessive rainfall is going to be hitting along the coast and to places into Seattle going into Portland here. So do expect uh, those rain showers to pick up and then very heavy rain potentially by the time we get into that Monday, February 28th time frame. But there's your temperatures by Tuesday as we start March 1st. <laughs> so March is a, a transition month. We tend to have a little, a lot of big swings in, in, uh, in March. So yeah, it's not out of the ordinary where we see these rapid warmups like this after we've seen so much cold air. So as the jet stream starts to retreat, we get the flow off the Pacific and that's a zonal flow and that's a warm flow. So you're gonna be experiencing some pretty nice weather for a good chunk of the country uh, by the time we get into March uh, first time frame with those well above average temperatures for a good chunk of the West and into the you know central part of the US and much of the Ohio Valley with well above average temperatures. And even into Thursday, March 3rd, it continues to remain pretty nice for a good chunk of the country. We are gonna be turning our attention to the North. Uh, we do see that, you know, that Northwest flows trying to hang on as the jet streams well to the North. So you still are gonna be getting these sporadic clipper systems into portions of the Dakotas and to Minnesota, as well as uh, uh, Wisconsin and to Michigan here, and the far northern tier uh, regions of uh, southern Canada, as well as northern New England by the time we get into that Thursday uh, time frame. But we're going to be watching this system more, more specifically out here in the Pacific Northwest, or things are going to be starting to change as we get deeper into Thursday, especially into Friday, and again, especially going into next weekend where we're going to have a little bit more active weather you can see the red line here that's the freezing line so the jet stream is well to the north you continue to have that northwest flow so you have you know sporadic snow showers lake enhanced induced snow showers where you're going to have that atmospheric river continue to remain active for a good chunk of the week and then the cold temperatures will transfer to some snow showers you know, up in the higher elevations, going back into Idaho, as well as uh, Montana, going into that Thursday time frame. But as we get into the Friday, February 4th, things do start to get a little bit interesting. We start to see these spokes of energy diving down one after another. You've got one over the Four Corners regions. You have another one going to be impacting, again, the Pacific Northwest. And you got another one trailing behind it. So it's just a one after another with parade of storms that's gonna be inundating the, the British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest with a lot of rain. And then once we get tapping into some, a little bit more colder temperatures by then, a lot of that's gonna be transferring to snow as we get deeper into that Friday and especially into next weekend timeframe. So we're gonna be starting to see the buckle and the jet stream a little bit again as, as the PNA will start to go negative by then. We're gonna to start to see a little bit more colder air intrusion entering uh, parts of the West Coast here with that, that, that the developing trough that's gonna be entering the picture. And as it does, it's gonna create some instability. And we could be looking at a fairly significant snowstorm going into portions of uh, the Colorado Rockies here as the NAO will go negative by then. We start to see these systems somewhat kind of slow down. They're not gonna be as progressive as we're gonna be seeing all week long. So as we get into the next weekend time frame, of course, this is seven days out, but we are seeing our next potential developing, you know, snowstorm. And it's not out of the question. I mean, this is typically when, you know, places into Denver get their most significant snow. I mean, March is the snowiest month into Denver. It's been very dry. So I'm thinking things are gonna be starting to change in a big way as we go into that March time frame, as the pattern will change and bring more significant opportunities for increasing snowfall for portions of the Rockies. And that system with the slowing down, I do feel it's gonna have enough energy still left 
continued to dump snow into portions of Nebraska going into uh, I Iowa then by the time we get into the next weekend time frame where it's just going to be all rain to the south so you're predominantly dry for most of the week after today but next the following seven days yes we have that another system potentially coming in through Texas through Oklahoma and portions of Kansas bringing the rain back in the picture for you so as we get deeper into that Sunday time frame again those spokes of energies that I that we showed you kind of this one after another is going to be pummeling uh, portions of the West going into the Rockies and that system will be coming across so it's gonna be a little bit more active as we get into next weekend it's a lot less active this week as the temperatures as the systems tend to start to modify after we've had such a big active week the atmosphere is going to modify it's so a lot less active this week with a lot less a lot of uh you know nicer weather for the week ahead but as we go into next weekend things are going to be starting to change again with a little bit more instability and a little bit more troughs that can be coming across the country tapping into some of that energy and that's going to create that lift along with those well above average temperatures by then so by then we're talking about some probably heavy rain uh, entering the pictures into portions of the Ohio Valley, getting into the Tennessee Valley, back into the mid-Atlantic states, as the culprit will be this deepening trough. I think we remain well above average for a good chunk of Alaska for the rest of the week. But, the, but by the time we get into next Monday, this is not until March the 7th time frame, as those spokes and spokes of energy will come across, we do have a fairly significant trough that's going to be diving across the west coast with that pna going negative that's going to set the stage for below average temperatures for a good chunk of the west and the into the northern rockies here as we're that's going to be creating that tapping into that energy off the southwest flow again so a lot of this instability could be bringing some heavier rains and then if not some flooding rains going into the Tennessee Valley up here into the Ohio Valley and some of these storms could be on the severe side by then down here in portions of the southeast so we'll just have to watch this instability as it looks to be a lot more active going into the following week but underneath that we could be looking at a pretty significant snowstorm by then dumping some pretty heavy snows over several days over the Rockies I do think it's going to be slow enough as the system's going to be less less progressive by then with the NAO going negative that's going to allow that system to slow down and tap into some of that colder air for a longer period of time and that's going to create the instability and a lot a little bit more lift over an extended time frame dumping some heavier snows by then into portions of Iowa going into Wisconsin as the southern flank will be dealing with some pretty heavy rain if not some flooding rains by then into Tennessee and to Kentucky so as we move through and go through next Monday there's your high temperatures as the temperatures will rebound we do have another cold front with that trough going to be entering the west coast here underneath that we're, these are high temperatures as we go that's zero z that's next Monday March the 7th those are these are your high temperatures now well into the 20s underneath that with some pretty heavy snows and portions of the Rockies and going through the northern states into Iowa into Wisconsin of course we'll fine-tune this as things start to modify and get colder again for portions of the south there you go highs back in the 40s and 55 by the time we get into next Monday for Dallas Fort Worth and there's your potential snow picture so um you know for the next for the next week the main story is going to be your a lot of the rain off the west coast but as we get into next weekend we into friday saturday and sunday going into monday time frame we're looking at a little bit more significant snows and a little bit more significant snowfall uh totals into portions of the west and the and the the northwest here going into the rockies and i do feel this system will potentially slow down by then we'll be able to make that turn off to the northeast and dump in some pretty good snow swath by then but here's the setup really between now and next Friday. The main culprit this week and the main impacts are going to be your very heavy rain off the West Coast. If you got a lot of travel plans, if you're a truck driver traveling in and around the country, there's your rain and precipitation. So things are going to be dying down in a big way as things start to modify. A lot of the activity is going to be off the West Coast with daily rain showers. And by the time we get into Monday, 
with that heavier rain. But over the next seven days, we could be looking at some fairly significant totals in portions of Washington and Oregon and Northern California here. And then going into portions of Idaho as well as Montana, a lot of this activity down here in the South and the Southeast is really today. There's not much, really much activity you know, it's really today and going into portions of tomorrow, but it's fairly dry for most of the week as you're going to be impacting with that northwest flow, but well to the north and our and our Great Lakes states and northern uh, New England here. But it's really not until after we put in, you know, Saturday, Sunday and going into next Monday where we have a lot more precipitation with that developing trough that's going to be impacting poor portions of the west and that's going to create the lift. And yes, by the time we get into next weekend and to Monday, next Monday time frame, we could be looking at some significant rain, if not some flooding rains by then for a good chunk of the portions of the southeast and the Ohio Valley. So we're going to be definitely have to look out for that. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you hadn't already. And catch me in the next update where I protect you before and after storm.